Page 22, Giant Redwood Trees. Well, this looks a little bit of a, oh, what's going on here? But this gives us a chance to tackle something that looks really hard. I thought, oh my gosh, what can I do here? I'm not ready for this. Well, well you just kind of look at it and see if it makes sense. And sometimes things fall into place and sometimes it turns out to be really hard and you're not ready for it. So we'll find out. Let's look it over. It's, it's two line or two pages long or five lines actually. Treble and bass clef. Four flats in the key signature. We're in the key of A flat major. Probably should go do the scale uh, for A flat major. I have videos on the scales. You've heard this lecture before. You know what to do. Okay. Three four time signature. We got quarter notes and dotted half notes mainly. Okay. Now on this key signature. The flats are always in the same order. Now it's not the same order as the sharps, that's a different order, but it's in the same order, okay? So the first flat is always a B flat, always. The second one is always an E flat. The third one is always an A flat. And the fourth one is always a D flat. We're using all of them except the G flat. We're not using that. So the idea is you, glance at the key signature and you know how many flats are there you don't have to worry about what they are because they're always in the same order hopefully you know what they are and if you're doing the scale you know which black keys are involved because you're just playing the notes in the scale except for the accidentals mm, that's different but it just makes playing music so much easier than having to stop and figure well is this a flat or is this a natural and been there, done that. Knowing the scale is a lot easier. Anyway, at the beginning of this, you see the first three measures, they have an RH, that's right hand, and it's simply indicating that the right hand is going to play those notes. So in the first measure, the right hand is going to play the C and the E flat. Remember the E flat's in the key signature. And next measure, it's going to play a C and an E flat again. And third measure, it's going to play a C and an E flat again. What's the same notes in different octaves? Then going on, the left hand plays the half note. All right, the, the last two measures of the first line, you have a C and an E flat together, and then a C and an F, and then second line, it is a D flat and an F, and the D flat's tight. So you go hang on to it and just play the E flat here. And you do that again. On top of page 23, now we have an E flat G and then a D natural F. See, it would be a D flat because D flat's in the key signature, so they have to have the natural sign here. And then the next measure is a D flat B flat. And you can use one and five here if you'd like because both they're both black keys, even with big hands, you fit that. They put the flat in parentheses, it's a courtesy sign because it isn't needed. It's a D flat anyway, because the natural in the other measure is only good for that measure. So this is a D flat anyway, and that's tied. So you hold that down as you play the E flat in the next measure here. Now, if you would like, going from the third measure to the fourth measure here, you can use second finger if your hand's big enough. So you don't have to use thumb on both. And then third finger here, if you got big hands, one, two, you can do that. And then you're doing these quarter notes again. Now in the last line, the notes are split between the staffs. So the left hand plays the first note and the right hand then plays the C and E. And the next measure, the left hand, LH for left hand, will play the first note and then the right hand does a CF. That's different. And then the last few chords there, it's a D natural and a C. And again, they need the natural sign because the D flat's in the key signature. And the D flat, B flat, they don't need the flat sign in that one. And I don't know why they didn't put it in parentheses. It's a courtesy sign. It's not necessary. You don't need it. And then the last one is a 2 5 on the D flat, A flat. That's because the A flat is tied. See that? You hold it down as you play the C in the last measure. Here. So go through and sort of get a idea now of what the right hand is doing. 
And then we'll think about the left hand. Well, the left hand's just playing the first note in each of these, an A flat, A flat, A flat, A flat. Well, that was fun. And then the last two measures of the first line, you get a treble clef. And so that's an A flat, big surprise there. And then the next line is a G, and that's tied for two measures. Then you do it again, A flats. And then top of page 23, B flat. A flat, G, and you do the A flats again, blah, 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 blah. Second line, third measure for the dotted half notes, that's a G flat now. They, they need the flat sign in front of each of those because remember the accidental is only good for that measure. So if they didn't have a flat sign in front of the second one, it'd be a natural. F, A flat. And that's tied for two measures. Then you do this E flat. And then an A flat. So they threw you curve. You think, well, it's going to be an A flat there for the last measure of the second line. Because you've been doing A flats all the time. No, it's an E flat this time. And then A flat. And then A flat. And stay there. you got treble clef. And it's a B natural. Here. And then come down. Bass clef again. B flat, e, A flat, and then E flat, G, and then reach down A flat, F. So put the heads together, and you're going to hesitate all over the place. That's okay. Don't worry about it. Because we're moving around. you got to look at the keyboard for this. But you can memorize the first few measures. I mean, this is the same notes and different octaves. Here. And as this is playing them up here, here. It's just a broken chord going up. That's all. You don't have to go that fast, but you can practice that over and over and over. Should go the other way too. If you're going to practice it, go back down. So you get comfortable with it. And I keep the left hand up on top and the right hand below, because all the left hand is doing is playing the black key. The right hand is to play a white key, so that's why even coming down, the tendency would be to come over, but because this is playing the white key and that's a black key, I come under. Good practice. Anyway, going on, the last two measures of the first line, we went through this, we got this, and the hold, hold everything down, just play the E flat. The F to E flat there. And you do that arpeggio again. And then top of page 23 here. Hold all those notes down and then just go from the B flat to the E flat here. And you do that again. And then the second line, third measure, G flat now. Hold the left hand down, it's tied. Now it's different, now it's an E flat. And as you play that, you gotta do this, you get one beat rest. So, this last line, second measure, it's here, here, here. So uh, again, it's here on the last line, it's here. And then you come down here, you got one beat rest, both hands are coming down. So it's a B flat, A flat, B flat, and then here, and here. And hold the A flats down, hold the A flats down as you move the middle notes. These come down. So you go through and you just work it out. And then this isn't quite so bad, I hope. If it is, then it's probably too difficult for you. You shouldn't be trying it yet. Go back to the previous book and go through it again. That's my opinion. However, we'll pretend that you are getting it okay. And go through and take out the hesitations. As far as the articulation goes, you're pretty much connecting everything you can. Just play it all connected if you can. You have to lift up for the rest. That's okay. Dynamics. Well, there's no melody here at the beginning. It's I, In this piece, I think for the most part, you can go ahead and just play both hands the same. 
to give you a P in the middle of the piano there at the beginning, softly, whatever you think soft is. And then for the chords that moderate, come up a little bit to moderately soft, mezzo piano, go a little louder. So go up to moderately loud. Ba -da -da -da. So come back down, moderately soft. Now this is louder than soft, that you were soft at the beginning. This is moderately soft now, a little louder. And again, top of page 23, it's moderately soft up to moderately loud and come back down. You'll see it. Right there. There, and then come off. And moderately loud now. Moderately loud, go up to loud. Right there. Now that's loud and come out. Now you go back down moderately soft. And then finish it moderately loud. Softer. There you go. It's my impression of it. And then finally Andantino. Andantino again is that I don't like Andantino because no, people don't agree on what it means. To me, it's it's like Andante. It's very close. Some people say it's a little faster than Andante, and other people say it's a little slower than Andante, and I don't care what you... I just kind of play it in the Andante region. region. If anything, I'd probably... See, you see, the quarter notes are going to want to slow it down. But when you get to the dotted half notes, they want to speed it up a little bit. Otherwise, these just last forever. And you don't want them to last forever. So you have to kind of compromise a balance between the quarter notes and the dotted half notes because one wants to speed it up, the other wants to slow it down. You got to come in the middle somewhere because it all needs to be the same speed. So you don't want these too fast uh, to accommodate these. Okay, and you don't want these too slow because then they just go forever in order to accommodate this. So where do you go? Well, somewhere in the middle. Then you experiment with it and you feel it. What is What feels right? But the whole thing needs to be at one steady speed. Hmm. Now, there is a note here and they've given indications to use the pedal. I like it without pedal. Uh, and you always learn a piece without pedal first anyway to make sure you can hear all the notes and make sure the fingers are doing what they're supposed to do. Otherwise, the pedal tends to cover things up and you get away with making mistakes because the pedal covers it up. Mm -mm, bad habit. So we learn it without pedal and I think it sounds fine. And it's, so why have the pedal? Well, I see no reason for it. However, they put it in here, so let's talk about it. I'm not going in depth on how to use the pedal yet, but we'll just talk on this piece. Underneath the staff you see the PED and then eventually somewhere down the line you'll get this little star thing they've drawn in. This is one of the ways of indicating pedal in music. It's not the only way, it certainly isn't the most common and it's not the one I would prefer, but it's what they're using and you'll see it so here we are. The idea is you'll push the pedal down somewhere around where the PED is, somewhere in there, and you'll lift it up somewhere around where that star is. And I'm just telling you that. Somewhere around, how do you know that? Well, that's where a teacher comes in. That's where experience and listening comes in. So we'll pretend I'm the teacher, and I'll tell you here, for the pedaling, at the beginning, I'm going to push the note down first and the pedal immediately afterward, here. Here not together, it's one then the other. See, I want to start the sound first before I release the dampers, because when I release the dampers, I release the overtones. So I want to start the sound first before I release the overtones. I want it to kind of grow out there. So it's here. And it's not done rhythmically, it's just immediately after. You're going to hold it down all the way to that star there in the fourth measure. On beat three, when, so we hear a rest right there. Lift it right there. And you don't pedal this part. 
Now we're going to pedal this again. And lift it up on beat three with the hand so we get a one beat rest. That's pretty much how it is except at the end. For the last line, well, it's the last measure of the second line going into the last line on page 23. It's the same thing to start it. Note first, then pedal. And as I play the notes, or right after I play the notes here, I lift the pedal up. Right after I play them. The idea is I want to ensure there's sound through the whole thing, so I let the pedal overlap that just a hair to help me. Just a hair, not a long time, just a hair. So again, it's here. It looks like I lift it up as I play them, but I'm actually lifting it up just a hair after I play them. I want to play them first and then lift the pedal, but it happens very quickly. And you don't need to pedal the end. That's the pedaling here. See, the pedaling just adds another layer of hardness to this thing. Please don't copy me, that's just one way it might be played. It, really, you need to get into it where you can feel this music. And that means you're, you're comfortable with the notes and rhythms and moving around and all that. So you have to look at the keyboard when you're moving around. But then when you get the records, you don't have to look at the keyboard for those, I hope. You shouldn't have to, anyway. So get into it and get comfortable with it and start feeling the music. I'd like to play it with you very slowly. Let's just double check the notes and the rhythms. I'm not going to do the pedaling because you can hear it better without. You can hear it more clearly. So I'll give us three counts. Let's just do I'm not doing dynamics either. One, ready, go.